Are we still having a happy Sabbath? I want to take this opportunity to welcome those who came in after the official welcome was made. I noticed a lot of individuals did make their way in. And we thank you for gracing us with your presence. And we trust that God will, in fact, give you the blessing that you come seeking this day. Today for our sermon, today for the spoken word, we have in the speaker's chair, Elder Roxroy Bailey. Elder Bailey has been serving in this church in many capacity for many years. But we know that it's not only in serving in certain capacity that makes a person qualified to speak. It is in submission to the power of the Holy Spirit that someone is qualified to speak because the Bible said that the Holy Scriptures was inspired by the Holy Spirit and therefore it should be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. So this morning I pray that you will, I solicit your prayer on behalf of Elder Bailey. He is married to our dear head deaconess, Sister Bailey, and her beautiful daughter, their beautiful daughter is also sitting right there. And one thing I can say about Elder Bailey is one thing. He may not speak as loud as I can say myself because I speak loud, but when he speaks, it comes with volume and with meaning. And I pray that this morning that your prayer will be for him, that he, God will put his word in his mouth and that the word that he speak may be tailor-made for each heart. So breathe that prayer as Elder Bailey comes forward to present the word of God. But before he comes forward, we have a special music, Hymn of Meditation by Brother Millard Benz, and then you will hear Elder Roxroy Bailey. fire from above I've been down to the river I'm not the same the prodigal returned all my hope is in Thank God my yesterday's gone All my sins are forgiven For I have been washed by the blood I'm no stranger to no prison for I've worn shackles and chains I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back, I'll never be the same For all, all my hope is in Jesus thank God thank God my yesterday is gone all all my 
sins are forgiven. Why I've been washed by the blood. There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man, breaks him down to his knees. Lord, I've been broken more than a time or two, but then you picked me up and showed me what I ought to be. For all, all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God, thank God, all my yesterday is gone. Forgiven, or I have been washed by the blood, singing all, all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God, thank God, my yesterday is gone. All. All my sins are forgiven, for I, I said, I been washed by the blood. Yes, all my hope is in Jesus. Amen. Well, let me first uh, thank Brother Benz for those two lovely renditions. And um, my dear friend, Elder Fiddler, for that kind introduction. Let me say good morning, church. It's still morning. <laughs> it's good to be in the house of the Lord, right? God is good. This morning, we're going to be looking at the topic, proclaiming the kingdom of God and walking in kingdom authority. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, here I stand in the gap between you and your people. Speak to my heart first, and then through me to your people the hearts of your people. Let every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, may they receive this message with readiness of heart to their soul's salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember a time when Seventh-day Adventists were known as people of the book? Mm -hmm. We were always studying the scriptures, comparing scripture with scripture, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Does that hold true for us today? Mm. Church, we have an enemy, but who or what is our greatest enemy? I want to suggest to us that it is not Satan. The Bible says he is a defeated foe. It is not sin because Jesus died on the cross and paid the price for our sins. It's not death. Jesus has the key of hell and death and he has conquered the grave. It's not lack of power, because the Bible says we have great power when we become the sons of God. Let us turn to Hosea chapter 4, 
verse 6 for the answer. That's Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. For thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Our greatest enemy is ignorance. What we don't know is killing us. And it is depriving us of living the full and abundant life that Jesus has promised us. My people are lost for the lack of knowledge. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Here, Jesus was answering a question posed by his disciples. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came to give knowledge about the secret of the kingdom of heaven. And because our greatest enemy is ignorance, Jesus says, you will know the truth, and the truth will make us free, set us free. Colossians 1. Verse 12 through 14. Colossians 1. Verse 12 through 14. The Bible says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us to the kingdom of of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. God has taken away from, God has taken us away from darkness, ignorance, and confusion, and has made us partakers of the light of the kingdom of light of his dear son. God wants us not to be ignorant concerning the enemy and his devices to keep us from the truth about the kingdom of God. See, this is very, very important because the kingdom of God is at the heart of every scripture and everything that is written about in scripture. Almost all the parables that Jesus spoke about was about the kingdom of God. Let us turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. The word says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. Let's jump down to verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which, when a man had found, he hid it, and for joy thereof goeth and sell all that he hath and buy that field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Over and over in his teaching, Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God. God's every action on this earth is motivated by his desire to see the kingdom of God established on this earth again. Matthew 4, verse 17. 
The scripture tells us about Jesus' ministry. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his message. In Luke 4, verse 43, he made it very clear what his purpose was, what was his intentions, and why he came to this earth. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore I am sent. Jesus very clearly defined his mission on this earth. His purpose on this earth was to proclaim or to preach the kingdom of God. In Acts 1, Verses 2 and 3. That's Acts 1, verses 2 and 3. We turn our Bibles there. The Bible says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. All the way up to his ascension, Jesus was still speaking to his disciples of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We as a church need to understand the message of the kingdom of God. I believe when this happens, the Holy Spirit will be poured out without measure. People of every nation need to hear about the kingdom of God. In Matthew 24, verse 13, that's Matthew 24, verse 13. Jesus says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. In Revelation 14, verse 6, and this is the message that will herald the end time of the message of the kingdom. And we repeat it every Sabbath, as an affirmation of faith. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. How can we preach a message that we do not understand? that we don't appreciate. We don't know where it's coming from. We have got to understand the message of the kingdom in order to proclaim it. Everything that God does has a purpose. Proverbs 19, verse 21. Turn your Bibles quickly to Proverbs 19, verse 21. Bible says, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. 2 Timothy 1, verse 9. 2 Timothy 1, verse 9. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Amen, church? Romans 8, verse 28. We're searching the scriptures today. 
Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to his purpose. What we need to understand, what we need is to understand what the purposes of God are in the message of the kingdom. See, God's plans and purposes are eternal and they will never change. In Malachi 3, verse 6, it's Malachi 3, verse 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. James 1, verse 17. James 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So, see, Everything that God set out to do will be fulfilled. The purposes of God will never change. In Psalm 33 and verse 11. In Psalm 33 and verse 11. The Bible says, The counsels of the Lord stand it forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. And then in Isaiah 46 and verse 11 Isaiah 46 and verse 11 the Bible says calling a ravenous bird from the east the man that executed my counsels from a far country yea I have spoken it I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. What a wonderful message. God's purposes will be fulfilled. And what his plans are will come to pass. Paul says in Romans 8 verse 29. The Bible says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed in the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God wants us to be like him, to be conformed in the image of his son. And then, in Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. According as he hath chosen us, in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5 having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. This was God's perfect plan and God's original intention for man. In Genesis 1 verse 27, Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We were made 
in the very image of God and in his likeness. In Matthew 19, verse 28. Matthew 19, verse 28. The Bible says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And then in Revelation 3, verse 21, it's a well-known passage of Scripture. The Bible says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. Man was created to sit with God, on his throne. God's purposes will always be fulfilled. Romans 2 and verse 7. Romans 2 and verse 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. Luke 20 verse 35 and 36 Luke 20 verse 35 and 36 But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Verse 36 Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 53. 1 Corinthians 15, 53. For this corruptible must put on in corruption, and this mortal put on immortality. Brothers and sisters, God has a wonderful plan for our lives. He wanted us to be rulers with him. He wanted to give us immortality. He wants us to sit with him on his throne to rule over the universe. To be one like him. In his image. After his likeness. And to be given full authority. Over the things of this earth. Church. That's what God intended. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. The good news is that. When Jesus came to this earth. He restored the kingdom and kingdom authority back to man. Jesus has given it back to us again. The same authority, the same power, the same purpose Adam had. And he wants us to understand, to have knowledge and dominion and information so that we might know what his plans are. And purposes for us are. So that they may be fulfilled in us. Our scripture reading in 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brothers and sisters, the kingdom is, a marvelous, is the marvelous light. 
he has called us to and called us into. What a wonderful opportunity we have to be part of this kingdom again. Today draws us one day closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Galatians 4 verse 4, the Bible tells us, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son. This was the first time. And that is a guarantee that he's coming a second time. We have a wonderful, we have been given a wonderful message to give to the world. And that is the everlasting gospel of the kingdom. This is the only gospel that will lead to salvation, redemption, restoration, and eternal life. Let me repeat that. This is the only gospel that will lead to salvation, redemption, restoration, and eternal life. But where is the urgency of spreading this everlasting gospel? As Seventh-day Adventists, a lot of us have lost focus on the mission. Hmm? Because we have been sidetracked by the enemy of souls. So we spend our time focusing on the prophecies. And while it is good to know the prophecies, don't get me wrong, it's good to know the prophecies. They are not the everlasting gospel of the kingdom. These are just signposts along the way to let us know where we are in history. We get so caught up with what papal Rome is doing while precious souls are dying to hear the everlasting gospel of the kingdom. Just recently, the United States moved their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And some folks get all caught up in what this means. But how does this, how does this work in spreading the everlasting gospel of the kingdom? We as a people need to stop focusing on the signposts and ask the Holy Spirit, just as David did in Psalm 51, verse 12. He says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. When this is accomplished, we can proclaim, as Jeremiah did, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Then we can't help but go and preach the everlasting gospel of the kingdom of God to everyone we come in contact with. Prophets and kings, and this is a little prop. Uh, uh, in Prophets and Kings, and I hope we can get it up on, this, on the screen, page 716, paragraph 2. Prophets and Kings, page 716, paragraph 2. If you can read it, yep. Servant of the Lord says, In these final hours of probation for the sons of men, when the fate of every soul is soon to be decided forever, the Lord of heaven and earth expects his church to arouse to action as never before. Those who have been made free in Christ through a knowledge of precious truth are regarded by the Lord Jesus as his chosen one, favored above all other people on the face of this earth. 
and he is counting on them to show forth his praises of him who hath called them out of darkness into marvelous light. The blessings which are so liberally bestowed are to be communicated to others. And that is the good news of salvation is to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Church, this morning, we have been given a commission to go out and to spread the everlasting gospel of the kingdom of God. Of ourselves, we can't do it. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. And he's the one who's going to give us the willingness to be made willing to go and to spread the gospel to whomever we come in contact with. I pray and I hope that as a church we will wake up because there are souls that are dying out there and they need to hear the gospel, the everlasting gospel of the kingdom of God. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word which warns us that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Your original intentions are going to be fulfilled in our lives. We will have dominion again over this earth one day. You will take this mortal and make it immortal. And allow to sit with you on your throne to rule. This is a wonderful calling. We want to be a part of this kingdom, O oh God. Teach us more and more of your great truth. We don't want to miss out. Help us to receive it in our hearts. To believe it. And then, dear Father, to live it and to walk in kingdom power and kingdom authority. Proclaiming the everlasting gospel of the kingdom to whomever we come in contact with. Then save us in that wonderful kingdom at last when you come. In Jesus' name, amen. For the closing hymn and benediction, we got a special request from Sister Marsh and her family, especially on behalf of Sister Constance Marsh, that she has surgery this week, this upcoming week, and she is requesting special prayer. So I believe Pastor um, Baptiste, who is prepared to do a special prayer on her behalf. I was informed of this, so we, we want to make sure that we make special prayer on behalf of Sister Marsh. And in that same breath, Sister Marsha Campbell is scheduled to do a C-section to deliver her baby this week. And she is requesting prayer as well. And we're glad that our God, his ears are never too heavy to hear the cry of his people. So we are going to take this opportunity to, to lift them up in prayer on behalf just to ask God for safe delivery on the part of Sister Marsha Campbell and safe operation on our surgery on behalf of Sister Marsh. We're going to sing just uh, a hymn just to, just to prepare our hearts for, for prayer. The Great Physician. We'll sing that. Which number? What number is that? 254. 254 hymn number 254. Then Pastor Baptiste is going to pray on behalf of these 
two individuals. So if you would like to make your way forward, the Campbell's family, if you want to step forward, we, we would do that. Gracious Heavenly Father, yes, Lord. we thank you for your spoken word here this morning. You have used Elder Bailey yes. to bring a very important message to us. Yes. We know that there is a message. We know that there is a mandate. And we know that now is the moment. I pray, O oh God, that we will avail ourselves for the proclamation of your word. Your kingdom is going to come and your people who love and respect you will be saved. May we all give diligence to making our calling and election sure with you. Father, we recognize that this world is not a very friendly place to live in at this time. On every hand there is hostility. Hostility in the government. Hostility in the workplace. Hostility in the home. Wherever we go, we can feel the presence of the evil one. And so the great controversy rages. But we thank you that you are going to deliver us very soon. That deliverance is even at the door. So we pray that you will grant us the faith 
the hope and the tenacity to live righteously in this ungodly world. Father, we thank you for this church and every member who is committed to it. I pray that your Holy Spirit's power will rest upon each one, especially the worshipers who are here today and those who are following us live stream. We ask, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will bind us together with cords of love that will never be broken. And so, dear Father, we bring before you Sister Thomas and her family members in Jamaica who have lost their dwelling place. Father, somehow, somewhere within our hearts, may we feel the necessity of giving a token offering so that these people life can get back to normalcy also dear father we pray for brother Ru. he has challenges like so many of us do so i pray that you will take his specific condition and may you open up a door and many doors for him so that he can have happiness in this life. Lord, we pray for Sister Marsh. She is going to have surgery again this week. May you go before her, O oh God, prepare the way and help that everything would be okay. And then we have our beloved family, Brother Campbell and his dear wife. She is sensing the need of prayer. Lord, she is going on Tuesday for a very important surgery. One that can bring joy to you and this family. But we recognize, dear Lord, that there, there are so much complications that can attend this surgery. And so, Father, we are all standing in need of prayer at this time. But specifically, Sister Marsh, as she go, dear God, we pray that you may banish every doubt and fear. Help her to be optimistic because you are the great deliverer. You are our great defender. You are the great I am. You are the one who will bring her through successfully. And so, Father, we also pray that you will prepare the way for her. And as she go, help that she will have sweet confidence in you, knowing that her hope is anchored in Jesus Christ. So we claim victory. We claim deliverance. We claim success on her behalf today. Be with the entire Campbell family. They would of necessity be anxious. But you say, if we cast all our cares on you, we are safe, for you care it for us. So, Father, we thank you for the success that awaits these families. We thank you, O oh God, for everything that you will do on their behalf. And so today we claim it done in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. Hear a prayer one more time. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 And when he comes, to bring a crown, the crown of life and glory.
come, go back to your seats. God is good. And by His side we will sit down and tell redemption stories. Sweet is known in Sarah's song. Sweet is name and mortal tongue. Sweet as carol ever song. Jesus, blessed Jesus. Praise the Lord. Our hymn to close our service today will be hymn number 434. We speak of the realm. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for another beautiful Sabbath. Lord, we thank you for the message that came from you that was spoken through Elder Bailey. Lord, now that we have heard the word, we ask that through the power of your spirit, we ask that you help to help us to live them and also share them with others. Father, as we leave this place of worship, we ask that you go with each and every one of us, keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger and bringing us back here safely, where we may continue to glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
of the blessed, that country so bright and so fair, and all for its glories confessed, but what must it be to be there? We speak of its past may of gold, its wars that with jewels so rare, its wonders and pleasures untold, but what must it be to be there? We speak of its freedom from sin, from sorrow, temptation, and care, from trials without and within, but what must it be to be there? We speak of his service of love, of the robe which the glorified wear, of the church of the firstborn above, but what must it be to be there? Our mourning is all at an end When raised by the life-giving word We see the new city descend Adorn as a bride for her Lord the city so holy and clean, no sorrow can breathe in the air, no gloom of affliction or sin, no shadow of evil is there. Do thou midst temptation and woe, for heaven my spirit prepare, and shortly I also shall know, and feel what it is to be there. Then o'er the bright fields we shall roam, in glory celestial and fair, with saints and with angels at home, and Jesus himself will be there. We speak of the realm of the blessed, that country so bright and so fair, and all for its glories confessed, but what must it be to be there? We speak of its pathway of gold, its walls decked with jewels so rare, its wonders and pleasures untold, but what must it be to be 